Hey y'all, good Wednesday afternoon. It's time to cook something for dinner. As you can see, I've got some nice, fresh, yellow squash. I cleaned them up, snipped the ends off. I want to slice them, get them in a pan and boil them. And then when I get them cooked nice and tender, I'm going to put them into a frying pan with some butter and we're going to have fried squash. So first what we have to do though, like I said, is we got to cut these, going to slice them just like so. The slice and make sure you know with squash you have to really 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 wash them over and over some kind of way squash in my experience can be really gritty and if you don't wash them really good I'm telling you that grit and there's nothing worse than when you're eating food to get some grit in your mouth but well, for me anyway so anyway just slice them like so doesn't take any uh, length of time about four or five minutes you can have them all nice and washed and sliced and like I said when they get nice and tender we're gonna put them in a pan and we're gonna slice some onions and we're gonna fry them up and have some fried squash now this is something my mom used to cook all of the time I love fried squash and onions hope you do some people don't like squash I don't know why they just have the best flavor normally i like to have them and I'm, i'll probably do these again for um sunday because i was going to say these for sunday dinner but then i thought when i kept looking at them i thought you know what i need to have those squash in my life today so that's it see they're all nice and sliced up so what i'm going to do next i've got some water over here on the stove boiling put some salt in there can't mind you don't put a lot of salt I've boiled um, a teaspoon of salt in the water so it'll knock that edge off so when I get ready to actually put the dish together I won't need a lot of salt because squash will soak in that salt. Okay and all I'm going to do with those squash I'm just going to get them into that uh, boiling water with the salt and in fact I'll boil them about 20 minutes and they'll be done ready to go. Um, I need to put a little bit more water in because Actually, if you're going to cook them, you need the uh, water all the way over the squash. So, we're just going to add some more water. There it is. And we're going to let them boil for about 20 minutes, and they ought to be ready to um, kind of take a fork and, and mash them up a little bit. And then I'm going to chop the onions um, <clears throat> to go in them, mix all that together, and then put them in some hot butter. So, now the next thing that I'm going to do, because I'm going to do some... Um, turkey um, meatballs and gravy so I got me one pound of ground turkey over here on the side let's see I can get this going okay get that into frame yeah there's my pound of ground turkey a tablespoon of um, complete seasoning and I'm going to put about a teaspoon of my, um, that dry chicken bouillon seasoning in there. And I'm going to put a teaspoon of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, one teaspoon of, um, garlic powder. And, oops, I'm going to break nothing around here teaspoon of soy sauce one teaspoon of black pepper and this is one pound of ground turkey y'all not gonna do a lot I'm not trying to have leftovers and I'm gonna do some creamed potatoes and maybe some green beans and we'll have that fried squash and that's gonna be dinner for tonight uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put about a half a cup of bread crumbs in there. I'm not going to do an, an egg in there because, you know, turkey meat is kind of soft-like. And once you uh, start wetting it with other stuff like that, it doesn't do too well. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just mix it up really, really, really good. Like so. And I'll just do some turkey meatballs. Fry them up, and then I'll um, chop some onion, make some gravy, and then throw them back into that gravy, and 
that will do it. So this is one of those quick meals, except, you know, where the squash will take a little while to cook. You can probably have this on the table, maybe in an hour, which is not bad. Now you could pre-cook the squash like the day before, put them in the fridge, whip them out the next day, fry them up with your onions, and you can have your 30 minute meal. If you know, you're a person on the go, and you need that extra time so it's another quick meal y'all i don't know how i forgot this y'all but i did need to put my green pepper and some celery in these meatballs so i got a um one stalk of celery chopped up and then one fourth of a small uh, green pepper not a lot just something to help with the seasoning and then uh, when we get that all mixed up i'm gonna go ahead and make my uh <coughs> excuse me make the meatballs and cook them up and make the gravy and they will be done you know you know the meatballs probably take 20 minutes to do them because they don't take about 10 minutes to cook them another five minutes to make the um <clears throat> the gravy and it's done the pollen is back y'all the pollen is back we've got some hot weather here today it's in the 90s this week been sort of threatening like it was going to rain dark and overcast but it hasn't rained so far so we have escaped the rain y'all we have escaped the rain okay so i'm just going to show you a couple meat logs about so big not really big ones um meat balls are just very simple to make i'll let y'all watch me make meat balls so i hope you're having a, a god bless wednesday Hope you had a good Father's Day. Um, <clears throat> and for those of you who have not been able to hear or say you have a problem here, uh, I talked to a friend of mine that has a TV station here in town, and she was telling me maybe an external microphone may help my problem. So um, she's going to help me with that, getting the right microphone. So hopefully that will uh, resolve the issue about the not being able to hear so well. I apologize again because I want y'all to hear me as well as uh, see what I'm doing because since I'm, I'm on here giving instruction, you definitely need to hear what I'm saying. So, uh, we're working on it. We're working on it. Yep, yep, yep. Definitely want to be, um, you know, it's, just, it's amazing though how some people, I guess some people maybe have those high power mics on their phone or their, their viewing or uh, listening devices where it just doesn't matter what, what the sound quality is. But for those of you who've not been able to hear, again, I apologize for those times. But like I said, I'm working on it. We'll get it done. Okay, the meatballs are in the pan, y'all. Okay. I think maybe I got 12. This is a meal for four people, y'all. So, real quick and simple. We'll let those meatballs go ahead and uh, cook. And uh, I'll be back here shortly. Hey, y'all. The meatballs are ready to come out. So, we're going to just transfer them into the dishes I'm going to transfer them back into. Y'all did get 12. Or maybe I got a baker's dozen. So I got the meatballs done. And you notice I don't have a lot of drippings in the pan. Guess what? I looked in my <coughs> cupboard and I don't have but a little bit of uh, cooking oil. So here's what's going to happen. I got to have gravy for these meatballs. So this is just another little way to get your gravy done. I am going to use that dripping in that, that's in that pan. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and saute me a few onions in here for my gravy. Not a lot of onions, just a few. I'm out of a lot. Have you ever just got, ran out of stuff and didn't realize you ran out? So anyway, I had two onions over there. So I need, I like lots of onions in my um, squash. So I'm saving most of my onions. I'm going to have most of my onions going in my squash. I can put, I can spare a few more onions. But anyway, I gotta have some onions for that gravy. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and um, 
saute these up a little bit. They're nice and to turn the heat down a little bit. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to do the gravy. Just before, um, okay, yeah, just chop them up a little bit like that. There we go. <coughs> and this is, and for people who want to eat a little bit healthier, it's just a lot less, or not a lot less, a little bit less oil in your meal, or grease, or however you want to call it. So, I am going to however, put some butter in there. Let me get over here. I don't want, this. I don't want that burnt spot to get. I think it's going to be a part of my gravy. So, that little part thing. So, I said, when you're cooking, you have to watch. Now, I didn't see that. I smelled it before I saw it. So, we're going to get that out of there. Get those onions going pretty good in there. Get that little burn part out of there. See that? Take it out. I don't need that burn in there. And that's because I don't have a lot of oil in the bottom of this pan, so these, these onions are just sauteing. So what I'm going to do with these onions, okay, I am going to pour some water in here. Okay. That's about a cup and a half of water. And this is going to be what I'm going to do my gravy with. A quarter of a stick of butter. Okay. Get that get melted and cooked up. And so you kind of got a little bit of brown look in there. So we're good. Okay. Then, of course, I'm going to put a little bit of my... Uh, it's just another way to make gravy, y'all. About a half a teaspoon of my chicken bouillon seasoning. Let's let all that melt down. And I'm going to need some black pepper in there as well. Give me a half a teaspoon of black pepper going off in there. Okay. And just let that boil there for a minute, at least until the uh, butter melts, okay? And then, of course, I'm going to put some in my hand there. Got a pretty good taste in it. And then I'm going to put a, about a half a teaspoon of, you know, of my complete seasoning. I have to get my complete seasoning after complete things. Okay? Okay. I know I'm going to be using some more water in there. Altogether, there's going to be a two cups of water in here. So what we're going to do now, over here in another bowl, I have mixed um, just about three tablespoons of flour in here. And guess what, y'all? I looked at my little flour jar. No flour. Because, you know, when I used it all was Sunday, not to worry, I had some can pancake batter. You know, what is pancake batter made out of flour? So I'm using that same thing. What we need is a thickening agent. So I'm going to go ahead and pour that flour water or that thickening in there. So that is plenty, plenty, plenty. So I say have your water standing by. A little bit more water in there. Because we need a good amount of gravy to go on those meatballs. Okay. Just pour a little bit more. Okay. And you got a nice gravy. You know, normally I put, I used to do the, uh, the root type gravy where you mix the, uh, the oil and the flour and let it brown and all that kind of stuff. But this is just another way, you know, just what it is, just, um, some broth and thickening and season it up real good and you still got gravy. Okay. Ooh, that's nice and tasty too. Now, all I need in that <clears throat> is a, um. So go ahead and get ready to put my, I'm going to thin it out a little bit more. See. I'm going to need a little bit of salt in there too to pull everything together. Even though my other ingredients were salty, I'm going to put, I can do a little bit more of the soy sauce. The soy just browns it up a little bit more, which is fine like it is. 
what? And then I'm still going to need salt because salt just does that extra little thing that we need. About a um, fourth of a teaspoon of salt in there. And I think we're going to be good from there. It doesn't seem like a lot of gravy. Let me see. Let me just go ahead and do that. If I need to add more, I will. Okay. Let's give it another quick taste. Okay. Now it's ready for the meatballs. Let's go ahead and, and drop your meatballs in there. Okay. And voila. You got your turkey meatballs and gravy. Simple, simple, simple. Because you know a lot of people shy away from uh, making gravy because they're scared they're going to burn that flour. It's not that difficult to make. So what I'm going to do for about 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to put the lid on and let these cook. Then I'm going to take them out of the pan and then we're going to get our squash done. Okay, y'all, it's time to fry the squash. I got the onions already in there with about a, <clears throat> almost a half a stick of butter. And I'm going to put some more butter in there, of course, when I put the squash in. But I got the heat sort of a little bit low. And, of course, I'm going to season those onions while they're cooking with about a half a teaspoon of my complete seasoning. Just a half. And I'm going to hit them with a little salt and pepper. Fourth of a teaspoon of salt. Fourth of pepper. Pepper. You just get them nice and um, translucent or just get them softened up a little bit. And uh, then I'll put some more butter in there and then we'll drop the squash in and let them fry. That smells so good with that complete seasoning and smell of onion. They're almost ready. Another few minutes. And I got the heat down low because they're frying pretty good. Remember, I got butter in here, so you cannot fry them on high at all. Cannot do them at all. raise that heat just a hair I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of my butter in there I'm gonna go ahead and let it start to melt then I'm gonna get the squash going in there and we will let the squash fry a good 10-12 minutes and they will be ready squash on board and back there on this little pot back there that's what I'm gonna do my instant mashed potatoes uh, instant mashed potatoes are really simple and easy to mix basically you can fix your cream potatoes according to the box but I'll show you what I do to mine um, obviously you gotta heat some milk and I'll be putting butter and sour cream and salt and pepper in just to give them that little extra bit of flavor. Okay. It's about time to get those squash going on. And I'm just going to start putting them right there in the center part. Okay. So this is how you do This is hot and as simple as it gets to do uh, fried squash. I mean, it's just that simple. And remember, that I, when I boil the squash, I put um, some salt in so I won't be putting a lot of salty stuff in there. So what we do is just let these squash fry slowly for about, well, I'd say about 10, 15 minutes. Because we want them a little uh, brown on them. 
And basically what we do doing now is just getting the onions mixed in with them. With the squash. Put that other half teaspoon of black pepper. I like lots of black pepper on my squash. And just a hair of that uh, chicken bouillon, just a little bit. <clears throat> Not a lot. And the remainder will be for flavoring or seasoning. I will put salt on them. Okay, so I've already done some um, complete seasoning. So just a little bit more salt. And like I said, you have to be very careful with squash because they obviously are very soft and all that flavor will just absorb right into them. And what I'm going to do is medium high heat because I want these squash, I want all that water to cook out and I want them to get a little uh, brown on the bottom. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to let those uh, squash go ahead and cook. I've got, uh, I'm going to put about a cup of water in my pot. And... cup of milk. Go ahead and pour it. About a cup of milk. That should make enough cream potatoes for me and uh, Lauren and Kareem. Okay, I'm going to put that milk and water on that back burner and bring it to a... Okay, y'all, the squash are ready. See how you have to let that little crusty stuff get in the bottom of the pan and see how they shrink a lot. But that's some good eating laying there in that pan looking at y'all. So I'm going to dish these up and um, I'm going to be ready to eat this here shortly. So once you get them done, just go ahead and turn the heat off from under them. But you see what it's supposed to look like when you know you got some good old old timey fried up squash. Okay. So also I've got on the back burner, like I said, that's my milk and my butter. And I'm going to put sour cream in there. And I'm going to have some mashed taters in a few minutes, y'all, for that uh, gravy to go over and the meatballs and we'll be ready to sit back relax and enjoy a good old meal here and i did some uh canned green beans you know you just throw them in the pan and season them up a little bit i put a, about a teaspoon of uh garlic powder in those mashed potatoes a little bit of that probably all told i've used a tablespoon of this in my cooking y'all probably say well dog don't you put nothing in everything pretty much Go ahead and put my uh, sour cream in there. Mm -hmm. Get that squash off the bed now because they are done. They are definitely done. That water is good and hot. And what I do is just go ahead and pour those food line cream potatoes. About two cups is all I need to do. Two cups will uh, be enough for four people. Okay. And you don't have to have the water boiling, just have it hot. And once you get enough in there, those potatoes will thicken up. A little black dot and I don't want in there. Okay. Okay. And let those potatoes sit for a minute so they'll set. Yum, yum. It's going to be all right, y'all. Just take a fork and whisk them. The fork there. I think I'm going to have to put a little bit more salt and some butter. You just can't beat cream potatoes with some gravy poured over them. Just a t I love this um, salt. Maybe we'll make them a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker. Okay. And all you have to do is just add some more of the <coughs> potatoes in there. Basically, you fix these potatoes according to the box except for, you know, if you want to put the, um, pour the, um, garlic powder and all that in there. Okay. 
my complete season. I forgot. I forgot. I almost forgot my complete season, y'all. Sorry about that. And you know, when you're putting butter in, cream, in these cream potatoes, it's not going to look um, yellow because butter is really not. It's real, real, real pale yellow. So they're loaded up with butter already. So that's that. Wow. Those are wonderful. So now the meal is complete, y'all. Okay, y'all, there it is. A quick little dinner for four. Uh, turkey, uh, meatballs, smothered in gravy, some fried squash, cream potatoes, instant cream potatoes, and canned green beans. It makes a wonderful, quick meal. For a family of four or for two, there's three of us here, and we're going to tear it down. Okay, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in with me. Thank y'all for always supporting me. And thank you for the wonderful feedback that I'm getting daily uh, on the videos. Again, I'm working on the sound. Uh, and so, like I said, someone told me that I maybe needed an external microphone. So I'm going to try that, and we'll see what happens. Mary Liz, there's that pretty pot again, girl. So, anywho, y'all, I'm getting ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy me just a small plate. I'm not really that hungry, but I'm going to sit back and relax and enjoy me a little bit of this food. Listen, y'all, keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. And until I cook again, I love you. Thank you again for your support. Continue to pray without ceasing for all of our sisters and brothers around the country who are going through various uh, hardships in their life. The weather is still raging in some parts, so keep that prayed up daily. So, again, love you guys. Until I cook again now, to lose.